Uzi's a really interesting player because prior to this year, everyone always said he was the best player to never win anything. But he's now won an LPL title, has a chance to win an international MSI title, and that would propel him forward into the conversation in a very strong way. And this year, I feel like he's understood how he, as well as his team, have to be very good in order for him to get recognition. Uzi is playing the best that he ever has in his career. Normally, when you have a domestic split from Uzi, he still makes a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes that you don't normally see from him on an international stage, but he was just a completely different animal. Uh, it used to be before that Uzi was kind of this mad dog on a leash, and his team just kind of held the leash back. This time around, he's more of the leading sled dog, you know, charging forward to victory and really paving the path for RNG. <laughs> Welcome to the conclusion of MSI 2018. As RNG ready to reclaim the MSI Championship Trophy for the LPL as they look to take down Korea's King Zone, Dragon X. If I truly believe that Uzi is the best player in the world right now, then he needs to prove what Faker has already done. That you can look across from your opponents, that you can hard carry your team, and that you can be the difference in a very close matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, in Paris and around the world, let's kick off the fight for the championship and the title. This is interesting for RNG. People, we set up the, the defense style, try and wait for Uzi to scale up. BDD finds himself under some pressure as four members of RNG look to run him down. First kill of the finals to Uzi. Tanks full steam ahead. They're going to go for the dive. Prey has no flash available. King Zone got trapped, and Uzi gets a double kill. 5-0-3. This might be it. A multi-man stun from PDD's bought some time, but nobody has even touched. RNG are destroying, dismantling, deconstructing King Zone. And as King Zone run for their lives, Uzi goes godlike, takes down the inhibitor turret, and turns his attention to the Nexus turrets. What's interesting about the LPL in general, and especially Royal Never Give Up, is that they've kind of always been like this. They go to the international tournament, and all the way back to, you know, 2014, they would just play Raise the Puppy, Protect Uzi. And it's interesting because in the context of the best teams of the world, you would always say that the team who plays multiple styles, that is triple threat team, is always going to have an advantage because they can play to that diversity. They can change up their playbook. We're loading up onto the rift that is game two. It's another double tank comp on the side of RNG. Yeah, it's another comp where protecting Uzi is going to be the big, big objective for them. They're very low. Uzi's also almost dead if they can just get to him. Oh, keep an eye on him. 400 hit points. BDD's looking for targets to Blade Surge. Not going to be able to find the stun, though, as Kars is on the front line. The last remaining full HP tank. Hard gets a rupture onto Levy. There's at the back end. There's a two for one. Royal never give up. Have lost this fight. More victims will fall. I got him. King Zone, Ace. Royal never give up. No King Zone are going to be able to take the Nexus! King Zone melts through Royal Never Give Up and even the series one to one. In sports, and also in League of Legends, it's usually seen as an insult to be called one-dimensional. Every team that does something really well, you go into the playoffs, and because you only do one thing, someone counters you and then you lose. And like, oh man, they really just have to be a more complete team. And for so long, that's been the criticism of Uzi. That's been the criticism of RNG. You can't win by funneling all your resources into one dude and just letting him carry. But that's how they won LPL. And if they win MSI, I think they can actually start changing that conversation. As far as being a complete team, if they just do one thing really, really well and win a tournament with the number one team from every single region, 
I think that can change the way teams approach the game. You can hear Zenith cheering as we load up onto the rip. Here comes Uzi to shot Barrage, tags onto Prey. The flash towards <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow, Uzi manages to use that arcade ship. Now he's exhausted. Here comes Khan. Standing out to fight some time. Uzi manages to change that back. Arcade ship. Let me go back. Find the torch. Let me not get to go back. Now Lemmy's in trouble. He gets chopped down, taken out, and killed by Prey's on an attack. It's Uzi with the double. Never doubt Uzi. He actually just made him everyone. Trade of Corruption manages to tag onto Uzi. He uses the QSS, manages to escape with his life for now. Stands United's buying some time. Uzi's just on the front line. They cannot lock down Uzi in time. King Zone have no defenses, have no power, and have nothing to stop RNG. That's not, that's not. Uzi's got a taste of winning this year, and he likes it. Now they are one game away. Uzi's been in the conversation of greatest ADC for a very long time, although I think he finally got to cement himself as the king of ADCs when he picked up the LPL title. He said that he didn't just want his domestic title, that he wanted his international one. And with that, I think you need to start having the conversation of possibly greatest player of all time. It's hard to undo Fager's legacy with how many titles he's achieved, um, but if Uzi begins picking up these international titles, who, who knows how long he's going to play for. He's a very young player. He's been mechanically gifted for so long. I think it's fair to say that he's at least now in the discussion if he lifts this MSI trophy. This is a match point. The tournament life is on the line. Baron Pitt is where the fight is. Look at this. It's already secure. It's King Zone. Can they win the fight? Now the boss buys some time. Finally gets there we go. Better a play kill. Crosses the first. Look at the front as they fly the call back. And who's he trying to do something? He's taken out. It's a double kill and King Zone gets four. What an opening for King Zone. They just had the perfect team fight. Kaiser Pitt is going to win. Okay, I'm going to win. Okay, I'm going to win. Okay, the only positive for RNG is that Uzi is actually strong enough to take a team fight. That is how RNG can win. We just have to remember how hard it is for Uzi because he's watching everyone in front of him get hit by three to four massive AoE abilities that destroys them. So he needs to play team fights perfectly. RNG inside the Baron Pit. for the best player in the world, Uzi.
其实真的，这是我六年以来一直一个最大的梦想。我觉得今天实现了，真的我太开心了。我完全想象不到，我现在站在这里，真的我是冠军，我们是冠军，谢谢你们。They've constantly been second place behind Korea. You know, maybe you you take 2015 out of there, the collapse of the LPL. It was then 2016, the rebuilding. 2017, the reemergence of the LPL, and now 2018, you know, coming to to reign their dominance. Uh, he's vindicated China and himself. You know, it's no more second place. It's grabbing hold of the first place and proving that they truly are the best region in the world. <laughs> 这个奖杯不要中国，回到上海。嗯，非非常的期待，因为我们俱乐部也有很多的奖杯，但是世界赛的奖杯还没有。我觉得这个就是当有人去参观我们俱乐部的时候，我觉得这个真的是非常强大的一个奖杯。